Welcome back to our channel and thank you for tuning in and thank you for supporting us. But if you're new to this channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please encourage us by doing so, so that we can bring you the latest news as they come. And together, we shall support our great leader, Mazen Namdekano, IPOB, Eastern Security Network, to make our Biafran dream a reality. He said, The Fulani Northern Governors, terrorist governors, cries out that Buari Impostor was a mistake. That through his stubbornness and cluelessness, he made Biafra to slip out of Fulani hands. And now, how will Fulani survive? They are not happy with him. They said Buari Impostor is their greatest mistake. They never knew he was going to, you know, destroy their Fulani agenda. They are not happy with him. But thank God for Mazen Namdekano, IPOB, and Eastern Security Network that stood as a stumbling block for the Fulanization of Biafra land. They stood in gap and they stopped it. According to reports, Ndibo have always been supportive and empathic to the Fulanese, and indeed all the ethnic nationalities that make up the present day Nigeria from ages immemorial. Proud to the independence of Nigeria, the inclusive pan Nigeria, pan African, nationalistic, cosmopolitan, and republican nature of Ndibo with the gracious, kind magnanimity, encouragement, and support of the Right Honorable Dr. Namdi Azikiwe made it possible for a Fulani cattle dealer, one Alaji Umaru Altini, to become the first elected mayor of Enugu, the capital of Igbo Nation, in 1952, and was in office till 1958, a feat that has not been replicated and or reciprocated anywhere in northern Nigeria and indeed anywhere else in Nigeria to date. Whereas Ndibo were at the forefront in the struggle for Nigerians' independence, to which the Fulani led northern Nigeria detested and opposed. Ndibo particularly, the Right Honorable, Dr. Namdi Azikiwe, the Zik of Africa, made it possible for a Fulani-led Northern Nigeria to produce the first Prime Minister of Nigeria. And he had to accept a ceremonial precedent in the spirit of inclusiveness and also facilitated the formation of a coalition federal government of Dr. Namdi Azikiwe-led NCNC with Alaji Amadu Bello led Northern People's Congress at independence in 1960. This act of magnanimity, solidarity, and camaraderie of Ndebo, which are yet to be reciprocated, did not stop the massacre of Ndebo by Fulani-led Northern Nigeria in the North and elsewhere in a politically motivated crisis caused by some adventurous young army officers just six years after independence in 1966. You know, the failed coup of January 15, 1966, which Igbo commanders assisted to abort, they aborted it without them the coup would have been successful. It was a Fulani-propelled counter-coup 
of July 29, 1966, that took up a misplaced aggression and revenge on Ndebo in particular by killing many Igbo officers and others, including the serving first military head of state of Nigeria, Major General JTU Agu Ironsi. The very first Nigerian Major General, who happens to be an Igbo man, and his host military governor of Western Nigeria, Colonel Adekule Fajui. The Fulani led Northern Nigeria championed a genocide civil war against Ndibo to ensure that Ndibo remained in Nigeria for whatever purpose, to which not less than 5 million innocent Igbos, including women and children, were killed. It was the Fulani led Northern Nigeria that engineered the balkanization and fragmentation of the old eastern region into states that removed the major oil producing area, which were originally part of the old eastern region from the administration of today's southeast geopolitical zone. As well, they made sure that Biafra land will be landlocked. All the aforementioned and much more didn't in any way deter Ndibo from supporting the Fulani North to form a federal government in the Second Republic under the MPP and MPN Accord of 1979 since the end of the civil war against Ndibo in 1970 with much mouthed, no victor, no vanquish, and the wise goose chase propaganda of the three R's, reconciliation, rehabilitation, and reconstruction of the dilapidated, devastated, and impoverished eastern region that never was and still isn't. Indibo have at every, at the very best, been considered only fit for a toothless second fiddle position, if at all in the scheme of things in Nigeria. At the end of the civil war and upon the return of Nigeria to civil rule in 1979, the Right Honorable Dr. Namdi Azikiwe, the Zik of Africa, and the most nationally, the father of modern-day Nigeria, wasn't considered fit enough to become the first executive president of Nigeria, most probably because he was an Igbo man, but another Igbo man in Dr. Alex Ekweme was good enough to be a vice president to President Shehu Shagari, a grade two teacher of Wulani, Northern Nigeria. A grade two teacher. And they are using a doctor to, uh, to, to be his vice president. Imagine that. Ever since Indibo have been cohabiting and doing their business with other Nigerians, wherever peacefully and developing, wherever they find themselves, in commerce, industry, and infrastructure, Indibo are not known for a born-to-rule mentality and or syndrome. Ndibo are not known for importing their foreign kids and kin to invade indigenous ancestral domains of Nigeria to dispose, maim, rape, and kill the real citizens of the country. Ndibo have never trespassed on other people's ancestral territories. Ndibo have never invaded other people's farmland in their ancestral land with their cows or animals. Ndibo did not create Boko Haram and Fulani bandit terrorists currently plaguing Nigeria. The Fulani terrorist headsmen causing mayhem everywhere in Nigeria are not Ndibo. Ndibo have never absorbed power to govern by the force of arms anywhere. Ndibo did not create the present state in Nigeria where people were separated from their kids and kings, thus making them new minorities in their new enclaves. Ndibo are not responsible for the marginalization of others and or exclusion of some section of the country from governance and or key position. 
Ndebo have never appropriated other people's resources and or monopolized same for themselves. Ndebo did not formulate the quota system that cheats on others. Ndebo have never sought to foist and or force their religious belief on others. Ndebo have never been known for any expansionist agenda. Ndebo are not against the restructuring of Nigeria to what was originally envisioned by the founding leaders of Nigeria. The list is unending. Furthermore, what looks more plausible and minimum rationale expected from the Fulani Janjaweed at this time are unreserved apologies, restitution, repatriation, and reciprocity, not a wishy-washy selective ethnic dialogue, which at the best may be an unnecessary distraction from recent and current happenings and a calculated attempt to twist the narratives just to falsify history. My brothers and my sisters, Biafrans have crossed the Rubicon. No matter the amount of apology rendered by Fulani Janjaweed, Biafra restoration is the only solution to freedom. Thank you, my brothers and my sisters, for watching this video. And bye-bye for now.